Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I need to tell you about this song before we begin, so you know what you're going to hear, because very few of you are going to know it. What we have in today's program... Thank you. Uh, so, I am lucky enough to have a, a wonderful sister. Uh, unluckily enough for me, she lives in Washington, D.C., which is a fair way from uh, London, where I currently live, and also Melbourne, where I used to live. Uh, but I get to go and visit her and have a lovely time, and uh, when I do, I visit the Library of Congress. And uh, when I've been there, I have found many uh, delight. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment, but first of all, here is a tune written by Louis Armstrong and Preston Jackson in 1923. It's one of the only two songs, uh, only one of two songs in our set of ten that has actually been recorded. It wasn't recorded by Louis, though, or the King Oliver Creole Jazz Band. That's the style we're going to attempt, though. It's called, Papa, What You Are Trying To Do To Me, I've Been Doing It For Years. <laughs> chief archivist or something of that sort in the performing arts room uh, at the Library of Congress. So a wonderful person to know because uh, he can take me there and show me all sorts of things 
And now I have a, one of the, the reader cards so I can go and request things. And I can find these manuscripts. They're all on the database, but you have to be there to see them. Uh, here's another one that I found there. It's the Junk Man Blues, recorded by the King Oliver Band uh, at their Columba, Columbia session, but projected. It's not the same as the tune Junk Man, and it's also not the same as the tune Junk Man Rag. And I was very pleased to show this to Keith Nichols, and we talked a lot about it. Here's our version of what it might have sounded like had they released Junk Man Blues in 1923, written by King Oliver himself. sort of backing the context of the piece. All it is is the melody as you might whistle it. Uh, and that means there's a lot of guesswork involved and a lot of 
uh, creative problem solving, so shall we say, <laughs> where I have to work out what the composer actually intends. And because it's handwritten, sometimes it's even hard to read what they've written. Uh, in those cases, they were, they were fairly clear. Also in this one, uh, this one's from the clarinetist from the original Dixieland Jazz Band, Larry Shields. In 1918, he lodged this uh, handwritten in the hand of J. Russell Robinson, his friend and pianist, uh, later on pianist in the original Dixieland Jazz Band. Uh, so this is Larry Shields' composition called Jazzland, and then in brackets, one step. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, the original Dixieland Jazz Band, I know their material. Uh, one thing you might not know about Larry Shields, I think it's very interesting, uh, he grew up, if not next door, uh, then certainly within, uh, you know, shouting distance of Buddy Bolden's house. Uh, so these uh, musicians in New Orleans had a lot of crossover, and while the ori original Dixieland Jazz Band's leader, Nick LaRocca, uh, said some pretty awful things about, um, about um, musicians of um, different uh, backgrounds to him. He was a, an Italian uh, white American. He uh, was a little bit poo-pooing of anyone else. Um, Larry Shields and others, um, they really got the influence of people like Buddy Bolden. Anyway, this is Jazzland. We're going to uh, have a pared down ODJB line for this. Southside Chicago. He didn't live very long, and uh, there's only grainy photos of him existing. Um, and uh, he co wrote this with Clarence Williams, but I think probably you can tell it's mostly his work. Uh, we're going to do a quartet version of this, so you don't have to keep looking for the trombone part. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, on the south side of Chicago, 
the washboard was the thing in the mid 20s. So Nick Ball's going to come out the front with his washboard and uh, sit on on top of that trombone. <laughs> Any more time? Yep. Right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps for the first time since 1924, we don't know. Uh, this is Matilda Brown by Jimmy Blythe and maybe Clarence Williams.
So, of the manuscripts I've been able to find at the Library of Congress, uh, one that I was a bit surprised to find, really, uh, you, know, you think uh, people like Clarence Williams, Jimmy Blythe, maybe even Larry Shields, they're jazz names who are quite well known. Uh, the next ones are probably well known only at Whitley Bay, and they are uh, Anton Lada and Frank Rizzo. And uh, Anton Lada was the drummer and leader of the Louisiana Five. Uh, Nick, Nick Ball did a tribute to them a few years ago, but an extremely uh, niche uh, group. And who knew that there was a 1920 composition by Anton Lada out there? Well, now we know. And once again, another first live performance that we know of. This is Blue Jay Blues uh, in the style, mm, not so much of the Louisiana Five, more of the original Memphis Five. changing who they are. Like, they're not allowed to just be themselves, uh, but neither do they get to be one other musician. They have to uh, pass it around. Uh, Nick has been all sorts of drummers, uh, but uh, that's Nick Ball on the drums. Yay! And uh, joining him in the rhythm section, we've heard a little bit of uh, Malcolm Scare, but there'll be more soon. Malcolm Scare. <coughs> Our extra in the lineup there to the ODJB was uh, the wonderful banjo of Felix Uno. Yay! And uh, we certainly couldn't do this without uh, a wonderful pianist, and we have one here in Andrew Oliver. Uh, we'll get to the front line later, but I would like to introduce uh, a special guest. Uh, Roy Alnaldi is going to join us for the next year. So I'm talking about this Library of Congress as if I'm the first person to know it exists. Uh, that's of course not the case, and um, maybe even some of you have been there to look for various things. Um, one who did go was Keith Nichols. Uh, over 20 years ago he went and found this manuscript. It's a Duke Ellington tune called With You. And uh, it's not an exaggeration to say that Keith showed a lot of us the way, and I don't know if I'd be playing this music without him. I certainly wouldn't have thought uh, I know, I'll go to the Library of Congress and dig up unearthed, you know, unearthed these manuscripts. 
I do it because I knew he had done it. And this is one of his, with you. clarinet at the beginning. Mr. Lars Frank. Uh, our trumpet player has been uh, moving between styles so quickly he must have whiplash. Uh, 
does no good for my schizophrenia. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, Rico's been uh, Nicola Rocco, which is a worry in itself. Uh, he's been um, maybe uh, Louis Armstrong in uh, Southside Chicago. He's certainly been King Oliver. And uh, now he's been Bubba Miley as well. Rico Tommaso. <laughs> And on the trombone, filling in all those different styles and a lovely soul in that last tune in the uh, sort of early Ellington style, Mr. Graham Hughes. So here's one from Clarence Williams in 1927. He and Donald Haywood uh, wrote this tune and uh, lodged it with the uh, Library of Congress. It's called Harlem Stomp. And this particular tune we've arranged in the style of Clarence Williams and his jazz king. And that's Irene Beermans. I don't know if you know Irene Beermans, but um, she's a wonderful, uh, wonderful jazz person. Um, she's done all sorts of things, uh, including managing bands and, um, and uh, yeah, you know, and, uh, I met Irene in Australia when she was uh, um, bringing the, uh, the Swedish jazz kings out there, and that's when I met a lot of wonderful musicians like Ben Person. And um, thank you very much for the manuscripts, uh, Irene. Some of them are unpublished, unrecorded. 
So there'll be there'll be a, another edition. But we've got a tune here by, of all people, the clarinetist George Bacquet, a New Orleans player, and he recorded with Jelly Roll Morton when he was maybe past his prime, but uh, he was supposed to have been an influence on Bechet and all sorts of others. Uh, but in 1923, he wrote this very unusual piece. Uh, Nick and Andrew and I are going to play it in the style of the Jelly Roll Morton trio from about that era. It's called um, I've Got Those Shouting Blues. There's a, a section you might have heard that's quite harmonically complex there. Uh, I worked out those chords and it took me a good month of working on this manuscript of just the melody. And it's the only thing I could find that made it fit. Uh, and so I think George Bacay, we have to readdress what sort of a musician he was. Uh, you learn a lot from these things, although sometimes you learn how much you don't know. The next tune is uh, called Charleston Man Blues, and it was written in 1924 and lodged for, for uh, copyright purposes with the Library of Congress by Wade's Moulin Rouge Syncopators. And that was a band with several people in it, really, about uh, eight to ten people, and their names are all on the sheet. And it includes people like Teddy Weatherford, uh, Arnett Nelson, great clarinet player, uh, Jimmy Wade himself, I think it says James Wade, and the violinist Eddie South as well. Uh, and that's just to name a few. Uh, but this is a very interesting uh, sort of bluesy number. It's not a blues, but it's blues-like. So we're gonna stretch out on Charleston Man Blues. Thank you. 
with this uh, other new tune, I'd like you to uh, thank these musicians for doing the uh, impossible, which is playing a Whitley Bay set with no recordings to listen to. <laughs> um, uh, so... Yeah, but we can't be criticised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so don't, get right. don't worry, Rico, I've got some criticism. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you may. <laughs> Nick Ball on the drums. <laughs> Here's one more from Clarence Williams. It's from 1928, on December 19. In fact, it was lodged at the uh, Library of Congress. Uh, this is Creole Stomp. Once again, in the style of the Clarence Williams Jazz Kids. Thank <laughs> you. 